documents. So in terms of eligibility, you have to be a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident of Canada. Um, as Dana said, if you are not, then you need to take an English language proficiency test. I believe if that's if you didn't do your um, undergraduate degree in Canada or you're not um, a Canadian citizen or permanent resident, uh, you have to have a minimum of two years of an undergraduate degree. So that is 10 credits, I believe, um, in order to be eligible to apply. The minimum cumulative GPA has to be a 3.0 on the 4.0 scale. So that includes all university courses taken. Um, if you've only completed two years, that would be all the courses you've taken. Um, it does not consider master's levels courses, just undergraduate. Um, and the last um, part would be the Kira Talent interview, which you would do if your GPA requirement was met. Um, just a couple things that I was told from my program um, in terms of statistics, the average of my class um, in terms of GPA was a 3.76. However, if you do have, you know, above or below that, we still encourage anyone that is eligible to apply. So as long as you have that 3.0. And um, a question that commonly comes up too that I thought I would share is on OYAC, there is an activity section. So the PA program does not consider um, any of the activities you write there. So it's not a part of your application. However, McMaster University does require that section just to be completed to be considered for admission. So um, the PA program itself won't look into what you put there, but it does need to be completed for the university. So I can just go through the timeline. So it was it feels like forever ago now. <laughs> Um, that we did this, but the application is generally has to be submitted by the 1st of February. So it says on OUAC um, for myself and anybody in the, the Zoom call or Facebook Live here who is currently a student at Mac, that's actually a different application. You don't have to do both. So either the OUAC or like the internal McMaster application, that's by February 1st. And then everybody who, like Selena said, meets that 3.0 will get access to the supplementary application. Um, and that's like mid-February-ish. Um, looks like Prada has February 24th here. Um, and then you do have to submit the supplementary application by March 3rd, um, so very beginning of March. And then MMI invites go out mid-April. Um, so interviews typically around the very beginning of May. And then your acceptances are set out, um, sent out in like mid-May-ish. My class started PA school on August 31st, so it traditionally is um, just that very beginning portion of September, typically a week before most undergrads start. The U of M's application components. We will now move on to McMaster with four current Mac students answering the questions. So other than GPA, the only other component for interviews is Cura Talent. Cure Talent is an online interviewing platform intended to evaluate your leadership potential, verbal and written communication skills, comprehension of key concepts, your, and overall professionalism. The questions are randomly assigned and preparation and response time can vary widely. Uh, preparation time is only given for the video questions. For the text questions, you'll begin typing immediately. The prep time is determined by, by McMaster and it could be 30 seconds or it could be a few minutes. So you'll only know when you start the process. Likewise, response, time is, uh, response times also vary. All right, so first question, how did you prepare and what resources did you use? So Heidi, you can start. All right, so I wrote there that I use no resources. That's not entirely true, but I would just say for the Kira talent, I didn't really have enough time, uh, just the nature of the way that they sent out the what the Kira talent actually was, and then the time leading up to it wasn't a lot of time. So I really focused all my energy on just practicing and getting comfortable sitting in front of my computer and feeling natural about it. And I really think the Kira talent's intent is to just get to know you. Um, so I think that as long as you're confident in yourself and you can articulate that uh, at that time, then that's great. But really, I do suggest uh, knowing why you're going into the PA profession and why McMaster in particular. Um, but other than that, yeah, I just practice. And there is an option on Kira Talent to like do like a practice thing. Um, so I actually did that repeatedly. And even though the questions were just random and not based on what was happening, it, I felt that it did help because I got used to like the platform that we'd be using uh, come time. Yeah, so I can add to that a little bit. Um, 
actually, when I originally wrote my answer for this, I was kind of grouping the supplementary application and how I prepped for our MMI online. Um, so it's a little bit different than what I've written there, but I would say the biggest thing is similar to what Heidi was saying, just sort of like etiquette with online interviews. It's very, very unnatural, even right now, to look directly at your webcam when you're speaking. Um, and I know that sounds super weird, but so for me, I actually did like a little sticky note that's just like a smiley face. And I like stuck it beside my webcam while I was practicing so that I would actually look at it when I was speaking. Um, and that helped a lot, like, because whenever you get stressed and flustered, I have a fun tendency where I look up. Um, and so it's easier to have something distracting you towards the camera than away. Um, the next thing I did though was introspection. I'm very, very bad at like journaling my thoughts. And so I had to force myself to sort of keep track of what I wanted to convey in the supplementary application, because at the end of the day, it's very short, the amount of time they're actually going to see you speaking. And so I think you need to be intentional thinking to yourself, if they don't take anything else away from this, what do I want them to remember about me? And I think if you consciously write that somewhere and you've repeatedly kind of revisit that, it comes across better. Um, so that was another thing I did. But the MMI specifically, not so much for the, the supplementary application. I actually went through the CanMeds criteria, which is um, just online. You can literally Google CanMeds PA um, and it comes up with all these different competencies. So some of the things we showed on the, the first, like what is a PA slide? Um, and then I just sort of went through my answers. Um, I answered the question, obviously can't disclose what the questions were, but, and then I would sort of tie it to a quality about myself with an example of how I would have displayed X situation, um, how I would have displayed that quality. And then just like making sure you always answer your questions, obviously answer the question they're asking, but then bring it back to, and why would this make me a good PA? Because sometimes the questions won't explicitly ask you about the PA profession. And I think it's your job to still bring that back to that point. So that was like the biggest thing I would say. So similar resources for Cure Talent as the Casper and MMI, but one book I will mention is Savannah Perry's PA Interview Guide. Alternatively, you can also just look on the internet for interview bank questions, because I found that there is no way you can prepare for every question for the Cure Talent, because you're inevitably going to get something you haven't prepared for. But by going through these practice questions, you kind of get into the rhythm of things that you would say or experiences you might talk about. So then when you actually get into the interview, it comes faster to your mind. So I would definitely suggest that resource or um, just Googling exam bank. Another thing that's helpful is practicing yourself, recording on a webcam to make sure that, again, as Jamin said, looking at the camera, maybe you want to use some body language and cutting out those filler words like, like um, uh, because those can be a little bit distracting for the assessors. Okay, so similar to um, my classmates, I used basically all the same resources as them. I also used the Canadian PA blog and um, the YouTube run by Anne, who's here on the call. Um, amazing. She has a lot of interviews about how people went through the Cure Talent process and their application process, as well as a lot of information on the PA profession in general. Um, in terms of preparation, I basically did the same thing as my classmates. Um, I practiced recording in front of a camera a lot just because it is very hard and very unnatural to just look into a camera. It's obviously easier with a face, but when it's virtual, that's just something you have to adjust to. Um, something I also will say is that it's really important to, if you're gonna make a claim about yourself, or for example, saying, I'm a good leader, make sure you can back that up, have experiences that you can use to prove your point. And also just bringing it back to the PA profession is something that's really important that Jamin also mentioned. So that's what I did. Um, Cure talent is stressful, I won't lie, but um, you can all get through it. It's, it's a good experience. Next question is, did you practice with others? Um, so for the Kira talent, I did not practice with anyone. At that point, I think I just would have gotten in my head if I talked to other people and I knew that like this was kind of the first step and it was about me. So I didn't want to really branch off too much. Um, but for the MMI, again, I didn't practice with other pre-PAs or PA students, but I, I tried to talk to friends and family um, about how they would approach certain questions so I could kind of broaden my horizons and see different perspectives. Um, so that's what I did. 
Yeah, to add to that, I didn't actually practice too much with like the time constraints, um, recording myself. I absolutely never watched back a recording of what I was saying, to be honest, with you, <laughs> because that was super daunting. Um, but what I did do was actually I called a couple of my friends who like were and were not applying just different perspectives. Um, and basically, instead of recording um, with time constraints, I actually just brought up a topic that I wanted to talk about um, and just had open conversations with different people about those topics. So, for instance, one of my best friends in undergrad was in health and society, so she had lots of information on health inequities um, and different things like that. So, for instance, one time I would talk to her about like access to drinking water. And we would just have like, you know, like a 10 minute long conversation so that I could learn some things from her and then sort of bounce my ideas off and see like what was and was not um, like basically uncharted territory to me because you want to make sure you're comfortable talking about hard topics because things will come off differently if you aren't sure of yourself. I would say I mostly practiced by myself in my webcam and I did rewatch my videos, which was excruciating but necessary for feedback purposes. Um, I also practiced a lot with my mom during this time because I wanted to make sure my answers were coming across as authentic. And I wasn't saying things that I thought the interviewers wanted to hear, but rather I was saying things that were true and most accurate to my life experience. So I would suggest if you're unsure of an answer, run it by like a close family member or a friend to make sure that those answers are really coming across as genuine. So for myself, I did practice a lot by myself, um, recording myself on my webcam. I did rewatch the videos and that, that's where I kind of picked up on the things that I didn't like that I was doing. Um, you know, those ums, ahs, filler words, looking up or to the side. So um, that was really important. I also practiced with another pre-PA, her name's Nuha, she's awesome. Um, and she was so brutally honest with me, which was something that I really appreciated just because like, I felt as if I was practicing with like my mom or my sister, they'd be like, oh my gosh, you're great, like awesome. Whereas it was really beneficial to also practice with another pre-PA that would say like, no, I don't think you should, you know, come across this way or do this or that or your mannerism. So that's something that was really beneficial to me. I think it's great if um, any pre-PAs have like a group chat or just to connect with other pre-PAs and practice that way. That was something that really helped me. Did you have a practice schedule? Again, for Kira Talent, I felt like they really told us like not very far in advance. So there wasn't really a big opportunity to practice. So for the Kira Talent, I just practiced like a few hours uh, the days before. I honestly, the, the more I practice, the more nervous I get. So I, I just kind of just wanted to just be like, okay, I'm just gonna do it. Whatever happens, happens. Um, and then for the MMI, I definitely practiced every day. Once I knew I had an interview, I just practiced every day, worked on uh, questions and just trying to get comfortable talking in front of my computer. Yeah, so similar to Heidi, I did practice, but not too, too much, to be honest. I'm way more of a conceptual person when it comes to interviews. So I did a lot more prep on the written side of things. And by that, I mean, I kind of went through my resume, revisited specific instances and figured out how those would apply to specific questions that I may or may not get. And then the different topics that were important to the PA role. So I spent a lot of time just sort of revisiting and making myself familiar with the things I wanted to talk about um, and then trying to figure out how I wanted to talk about them. So again, I'm going to preface my experience with I over prepare for everything, including your talent and Casper, but I definitely did have a practice schedule and a lot of these assessments overlapped in the, in the way that I was preparing. But I would say that in general, the frequency of my practice was definitely increasing the closer I got to the assessment. So probably a week or two weeks before Kira, I was practicing every day, probably, you know, like five to 10 questions over a period of an hour. Yeah, I would say that I'm similar to you, Olivia. I was so nervous for this application cycle that I was like, I need to start so early or I'm going to crack under, you know, the pressure, the nerves. So um, I started about a month prior. I did read all of those books and went through all those resources kind of like the summer, even before applying. Um, but yeah, in terms of like actually practicing questions, I started about four weeks prior. I would say maybe just like even like you know, 20, 30 minutes a day, um, just to help with that comfort and ease those nerves. Um, when it was coming closer to the interview, I probably did like a few hours every day. Um, 
So it all depends on your comfort level and how, you know, you can handle the stress and anxieties. I personally thought I was really bad at that. So that's why I took a little bit longer to prepare. All right. So there weren't a lot of questions about Kira's talent. Uh, the questions that were asked were about how to prepare, which you guys answered. So thank you for that. Um, because McMaster uh, doesn't really have any other components, uh, GPA questions will be um, directed to our four Mac students. So um, go ahead. So, or, so, so the first question is, what are some suggestions for applicants that don't meet the competitive GPA? And many questions were kind of similar to that. So if you can just speak to how to make yourself a competitive applicant if you don't have a competitive GPA. I would, oh, Jaden, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I'll start with this by saying, obviously GPA wasn't the standout component for Mac in general, to my knowledge. We aren't told anything about the algorithm, so to speak. Um, but if I had to guess, I would say, probably with a lot of the other applications as well, it's a lot more about who you are as a person than that number on the piece of paper. And I think that everybody can agree. Um, one of the biggest things I actually took away from starting PA school, which seems far-fetched, but it does bring it back to this, I promise, um, mm -hmm. is that when you meet people in this program, it's very, very obvious that everybody is very different, but gets along very well. And I think that's attributable to um, similar qualities in us and the things that we sort of value out of life. And I think that those things are far more important than GPA to convey. Um, and so I would suggest one way that you could compensate if you will but even apart from a poor gpa is just like being able to talk to who you are and like to sort of explain why you do things and sort of be intentional about what you're sharing so really being self-aware i think is like the best thing that you could do in, in this application process at all yeah i agree with you jamin that was a great answer um so yeah, in terms of GPA, I mean, as long as you meet the minimum, I would encourage people to apply. Um, I think, like you said, there's kind of like, um, if any of you have worked in healthcare, there's that like healthcare personality. Um, and I can see it like so clearly in all of my classmates. It's just, um, in your answers, I mean, for Kira Talent, don't let the nerves get to you. Um, try your best to show who you are and why you would be a great asset to this profession. Um, that's something that I would focus on because GPA, yes, you could go back and retake courses, but I think something that's more important is reflecting on who you are and being able to demonstrate that and why you would be a great fit for this profession. Sorry, and something else I'll just quickly, quickly add to this is confidence, like which goes along with self-awareness. But I think, and I say this time and time again, when I talk to pre-PAs, if you're fence sitting about whether or not you want to apply for PA, my answer is that I think you need to be more sure before you apply, because it's very, very apparent in an answer if somebody is committed to the profession. Um, and I think that goes a long way. 